All right, what's going on guys? Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a review for the second last episode of season two of Better Call Saul. This is episode nine. Darn it, the season's pretty much over now. We got one more episode left. This one is called Nailed. And I want to thank you guys for being patient. Sorry I didn't get this review posted for you guys, you know, late Monday night or Tuesday morning. It's now Wednesday. Went back to work yesterday on Tuesday. So, you know, I had to work my shift and the usual stuff. Uh, my vacation is done now. So no more time to just be able to make tons and tons of videos. I got to, you know, got to work and stuff and then make videos after work as best I can. So this one I definitely wanted to do, though. I wanted to get time for this one because this episode was really incredible. This is one of the best episodes of Better Call Saul ever for sure. Spoiler warning if you guys have not seen this one yet. This one was written and directed by Peter Gould. So you know, uh, and then the finale, A Click, is um, by uh, Vince uh, Gilligan. So this is the team that brought us the infamous Breaking Bad. And um, this episode felt very Breaking Bad-ish, I want to say. Uh, this is definitely one of the best, best written and uh, you know directed episodes uh, we've ever seen of Better Call Saul for sure. So what I'll do is I'll read the wiki because I want to go through it and kind of you know give my thoughts on it with you guys. Especially the ending was insane. So here's the description from the wiki. It says Mike uses his spike strip to ambush, which we saw him building in episode uh, eight with his granddaughter there, to ambush one of Hector's trucks and extracts two hundred and fifty thousand dollars hidden in one of the tires. Mike meets with Nacho, who suspects that Mike is responsible for the heist. Mike admits his role, saying that he wanted to uh, attract police attention to Hector with the heist. Mike is dismayed to learn that Hector murdered the Good Samaritan that reported it with a shot to the face. At a hearing before the banking board, Chuck discovers, and I love this part too. Well, the first part of Mike was so exciting and incredible as well. Um, this episode, start to finish, is amazing. And it says, banking board, Chuck discovers that the addresses in the files, the ones Jimmy falsified, which we saw previously, do not match, creating a six-week delay in Mesa Verde's plans to build a new branch. A humiliated Chuck immediately suspects that Jimmy is responsible. Dissatisfied with HHM's performance, Mesa Verde decides to sign on with Kim. Jimmy and Kim arrive at Chuck's house uh, to pick up the Mesa Verde files, where Chuck accuses Jimmy of sabotaging his case. Kim sides with Jimmy and claims Chuck simply made a mistake, even though she really knows that that's not, that's not the case, and points out how Chuck has no concrete evidence and that his actions have shaped Jimmy into what he is today by shutting him out, not allowing him, and never kind of taking him under his wing as his brother. Uh, that night in bed, Kim hints to Jimmy that she considers that Chuck was possibly telling the truth and warns Jimmy to make sure he track his tracks are completely covered. Jimmy returns, and this part is absolutely insane. Jimmy returns to the copy store where he altered the files and buys the clerk's silence. Uh, Chuck then arrives to interrogate the clerk, but faints due to the running copy machines and his head uh, hit uh, and hit his head on the counter as Jimmy secretly watches from across the street. I'm going to add in horror to that. Uh, especially when he says, like, call, call the police, you know, or call call an ambulance. Um, man, the end of this episode was so intense. Just absolutely crazy intense. Um, when Jimmy's, like, you know, inside the, the copy uh, the copy place and you've got the lights everywhere, the way they filmed it, everything, they show his face and he's kind of... He's kind of becoming distraught. I actually thought he might kind of lose his mind earlier uh, at the hearing when um, you had, of course, uh, Howard there. You had him, and then you had Mesa Verde, and he's all getting confused and stuff. I thought they might do it there, um, but they didn't. And then afterwards, we see it uh, coming at the end where he fully, he's a full-blown meltdown and hits his head on the corner of the thing as he kind of like passes out from everything that's happening and it's just being too much, building up and just, just crashing. Um, yeah, definitely oh, crazy stuff. So we've seen this building to now, you know, all the way to this point. And, uh, you know, when you see Ernesto there and, and Jimmy goes by and he's like, oh, shit. And he goes in and buys off the, uh, the, the the clerk. Then he comes back. And this is so well written because Chuck is in a situation where 
because of what Kim said, he may even be doubting himself. Like, he may be in a situation where he knows that Jimmy is this way. He knows that Jimmy does this kind of stuff and he's blaming him. But maybe at this point, Chuck starts to question himself whether or not it's true and has kind of a full-blown mental breakdown at that moment because he's not sure if maybe he just did simply make a mistake. Maybe he can't trust himself anymore. He knows he has this kind of mental illness. Uh, For him, he doesn't think it's a mental illness, but everybody else tells him that it is and knows that it is. Um, So in this case, it's like... If the clerk says, yes, he was here, then he's he's vindicated. He knows for sure that, yeah, Jimmy was there and that he's not crazy and he didn't make a mistake and he's better than that. Um, however, Jimmy had gotten to the clerk earlier, in which case, uh, you know, Chuck just becomes enraged, enraged and just confused and just, just furious with, um, you know, what's what's happened because he, he holds himself to such a, an esteem that he cannot accept. Uh, he's, he's so stern and so so uh, straight, straight, narrow and, and um, uh, strict with with others and with himself, too, that he can never picture himself making such a huge mistake like that. And so at this moment, I feel like this is a, an internal conflict with Chuck that he gets so wound up and so frustrated by Jimmy and maybe still believing that he did it, but then maybe doubting himself that it's just kind of too much and he just crashes. And what a horrific scene to see. Boom, boom, you know, um, on, on the uh, the counter and everything. as uh, Because, you know, it's like uh, it, it just felt so real. The way they filmed it and everything, it just felt so real world to see something like that. I mean... A lot of times we talk about shows like Walking Dead and stuff like that in the channel. You, you have these kind of supernatural elements to it or these things that are not real world. This one felt totally real world. You know, like uh, you, you could picture something like this happening in real life and it not really, uh, you know, stuff like this happening, you know, all the time. Um, and oh my God, man, what a crazy ending to see. And I almost thought at one point that Jimmy might just run across the street, run in to, to help his brother and be there right away. Uh, and just say, screw whatever differences they have, screw whatever else is happening. But um, Kim calls it right that they actually have set up this kind of versus between them. You know, you have an antagonist and you, know, uh, you just have this, like, Chuck is the big bad so far of Better Call Saul, which is really cool because at first you definitely do not expect that to be the case earlier on in the series. And the writing has just been so clean and so well developed and so great that it all building up to this point, I never really saw, you know, all the like Chuck coming out and, 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 and going after the case and getting the case and then all this stuff happens and then Jimmy sabotages it and then makes him look like an idiot and all this stuff and wow. It's just pretty great. I mean, it's 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 insane. It's so good. It's so well written. The stuff with Mike as well earlier was awesome too. Where you see uh, the two hundred fifty thousand dollars, the uh, you know as he as he pulls out, and then the driver tries to <laughs> and he can't do anything. And, oh man, so good too. And I love how Nacho knew it was him right away because he's thinking to himself, and it makes perfect sense too. He's like, who in the hell would steal two hundred fifty thousand dollars and not kill the driver? That you know that trait what see i like that about nacho too he's he's smart enough to figure it out who would do that you know there's there's like nobody he can think of probably that would do that except mike mike's the only one that would have trouble killing him you know mike's the only one that wouldn't kill him and um man that was just brilliant too as well so all the way through this episode just, just had me on the edge of my seat the ending was Oh man, just such a crazy, just just crazy ending. It's like the season finale for this season, but luckily we get one more episode to get to find out what happens. Uh, might Chuck die? Because we know, of course, from Breaking Bad, Chuck is not a character in Breaking Bad. So we can either assume that he's either so old he's been put into a nursing home or something, or maybe that, uh, that um, you know, because, of course, Saul was not the main character in it that we never got to kind of hear about that. But I don't remember them ever even mentioning Chuck or anything anything like that. Maybe maybe he did during one of the seasons. I mean, it was a five-season show, almost like six, because the second season was cut in half uh, and shown over two years. Um, but this one, for me, totally kicked my ass. This ending was awesome, man. I, I got to give this one like a 10 out of 10. This is like a perfect episode all the way through from Mike all the way to what happens with Chuck at the end. And just this kind of a sibling rivalry that's going between uh, Chuck and... Um, and Jimmy and just kind of how he just can't handle it like it's just he's doubting himself and at the same time and and just this this cognitive dissonance is rolling around he's got he's he set up this whole thing in his mind and could he have made a mistake and no he can't because it's got to be Jimmy and 
Oh my God, just boom, down it goes. You can just see it, like you can see all the thoughts coming through as it's happening and everything. And why did you say before that he was here and now you're not saying he's not here? And, you know, like it's almost like he's getting to the point where he's even questioning his own conspiracy theory about this. That did Jimmy get here beforehand? And, and he doesn't have any evidence to show any of it. Amazing episode, man. Absolutely incredible. So a few of you guys asked for me to review it. There it is for you guys. I loved it. I bet you guys did too. Write your comments below. Let me know what you thought about the ending, especially with Chuck. What you think is going to happen with Chuck? Is he going to survive or not? I, I hope he does because I love to see their kind of sibling rivalry. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, man, because we know he's not in Breaking Bad. So, yeah, uh, crazy stuff. So write your comments below, guys. Let me know what you thought about the episode and uh, how much you liked it. This one's like a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. It's one of the best episodes of a show I've ever seen. This one was really, really exciting, especially at the end, because I love what they set up and how they handled uh, Jimmy, and uh, my evidence is knowing my brother. <laughs> and Chuck is just so, uh, oh, so great, so well done. So write your comments below. Let me know what you guys think, and if you liked this video, you guys can go ahead and thumb it up below. You can also share. Uh, you can favorite, and if you're new and you want to subscribe, you want to see more uh, Better Call Saul, of course, season three, it will be returning, so I'll be doing some reviews for that, too. Maybe not every episode, kind of like this season. You know, I do it as much as I can, that kind of deal. Uh, we'll do subscribe to the bottom left. That's it for this one. See you guys again real soon for another video. As always, it's Travis saying peace. See you guys.